Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash entitled parents. But first, a game of drunk or a kid. User Snuggle Bandit posted, nearly ruined a wedding by almost drowning in the lake when it was held. What do you think? Drunk or a kid? Find out at the end of the video. This story was posted by Russia Anna B. Daughter was six hours late to interview. Entitled mother yells at me for making her cry. Hello everyone, long time creeper on here. Never thought I'd run into an entitled mom, but here we are. So I'm a 20 female, I am a dog groomer. Been one for four, almost five years. The big thing in dog grooming is reputation, quality and time management. Yesterday we were expecting a girl to come in at 10 to try out as a dog groomer. She was promising, 23 or 25 years old, worked as a dog groomer at other places. She didn't show until 4.30. No call, no nothing. She apparently had a hair appointment and friends from out of town came in so they got their nails done. She asked if she could groom now. I said, no, I don't think so. When she pressed, I said, and I might be a jerk for saying this, we don't want or need you. There's no need to reschedule your tryout. I went back to get my last two dogs done. Apparently, she cried, and I was starting to feel bad. Now, entitled mother time. Her mom came in this morning, demanded we give her a second chance. I told her, your daughter was six and a half hours late. That's not something that works in dog grooming. Entitled mom replied, she was with friends. I think someone your age would understand that. Me, nope, when there's a job interview. She didn't call or anything. At this point, I was ticked and over it. I had five dogs to get done. She said, well, there was no reason to make her cry. I said, I disagree and got back to work. Apparently, she stayed up there and demanded we give her another shot. As head dog groomer, I said, not gonna happen. He left eventually saying her daughter was too good for us. I think you were totally justified not giving the girl a second chance. Six and a half hours late is totally unacceptable. Why didn't she just call and try to rearrange? Or better still, take an hour or so out of her day with her friends and actually fulfil the commitment she already made to you. Selfish bitch. This next story was posted by user Akio Amadeo. Pray roommate's mom hates me. Okay, this happened when I was about 20 years old and I'd already been living on my own for about two years at this point. I was talking to a good friend of mine, let's call her E, telling her about how I was looking into finding a new apartment that was a better distance from college and work, maybe something a little cheaper too. She kind of perked up and eventually brought up the idea that we could get a place together. We were both great friends, we liked the same food, music, movies, we loved art and writing too, so I thought it would be a great idea and it would cut down the cost of the bill. Not long after we found a place that was perfect for roommates, the only drawback was there was no fireplace. My old place had one. But that certainly wasn't a deal breaker, so we put down the payment and began to move in the following day as it was move in ready. I should have known her mother was going to be a problem before we had finished moving in though, but I just didn't realise just how much of a problem until later. I had brought along my mom, dad, sister and my sister's husband to help me move. I bought a washer and dryer, queen bed, couch and kitchen table to the mix. After all, I'd been on my own for a while so I pretty much had the whole shebang and all she had was her bedroom stuff as this was her first time living away from home. Anyway, I promised to buy pizza for everyone and already had some soda cooling in the fridge so after moving day I could feed my helpful family. E's mum was there too but she only helped bring in E's stuff and once my couch was moved in she just sat on it and watched as we did everything else. When E was helping us out, her mom griped that, My daughter is not your slave, she whined. E had offered to help, but we didn't ask or make her do anything. Besides, this was her place too. I can promise she'll eat at our table sometime. Eventually, everything was inside and I decided to order the pizza, and her mom spoke again. I want veggie supreme on my pizza, she said. I frowned at this. I'm okay with veggie pizza, but I know what the rest of my family likes, and I was only ordering four pizzas. Um, no one here really like all veggie pizza. I guess I could do one that is half veggie, I offered. What? You mean I do all this work and I don't get my own pizza? She was literally shrieking. Of course not, we're all sharing these. Thankfully, E intervened and offered to get her mom her own pizza. Although I could hear her grumbling the whole time that her precious daughter is so generous and I'm so selfish. By the way, her and E shared that pizza. I was exhausted by the time everyone had left. 
and it was pretty late when I had finally set up at least half my bedroom so I crashed and went to sleep. I didn't have work for the next two days and it was a weekend so no college either. So I was looking into a nice long sleep and using the days to set things up and make our apartment a home. Unfortunately, the next day I was rudely awakened by a loud banging on our front door. It was 5.30am! I was about to get up but I heard E answering it and, unsurprisingly, it was E's mom. I knew E and her mother were close and I think she secretly hated me for stealing her daughter when moving together was not my idea but whatever. I grumbled but went back to sleep waking up again a few hours later. I made myself something to eat and not a moment later E and her mom walked in with bags of groceries. Apparently they had went shopping in the earlier hours. As she sat the bags down she looked at me with a familiar tinge of disgust which I will become accustomed to. Listen, we just spent over $100 at the store today getting things that you can both use. I expect at least half of what I bought to get reimbursed right now, she demanded. She made sure E was out of earshot before saying this to me. Excuse me? You can't be serious. I'm not giving you any money. You went out shopping with E and bought a bunch of stuff that I had no say in whatsoever. If I went along, I would have gotten these things myself, but it was your choice to buy things without at least consulting me. And now you want my money? No way, I said firmly. She was used to her daughter pretty much doing whatever she asked, and I'm fairly certain she was shocked that I talked back to her, considering she just opened and closed her mouth like a gasping fish. These encounters happened often, her mother coming over at ungodly hours and coming over a lot too, at least four to five times a week. If she knew I was home, she always tried to watch TV loudly to wake me up, but E shut her down completely on doing that. E would stand up to her sometimes. She would often take E shopping and demand money from me until I told E about it and that finally stopped too. She always praised her daughter and thought of me as a selfish bitch, but I couldn't care less about what she thought. I still remember one day I was in my bathroom. We had separate personal bathrooms, taking a shower before work. And when I walked out, there was E's mother sitting on my bed, actually sitting on my work clothes I had laid out, her arms folded across her chest. We need to talk, she said snootily, but I went ballistic. You crazy bitch, get the fuck out of my room. I never invited you to ever come in here. I'm in a freaking towel for Christ's sake. You want to talk? She stood up about to speak, but I cut her off. Get out, I screamed at her. She seemed pissed, but left my room and I had to re-iron my clothes since she apparently had no decency or sense of others' privacy. When I saw her again, I told her flat out if she ever went into my room again when I wasn't there and didn't invite her, I'd slap her into next week. I was done being anything but mean to this woman because she treated me with nothing but hatred, so why even try? Thankfully, about three months later, she mellowed a little. She stopped showing up so early and stopped stopping by so often and when she did visit she would make a snide comment about not feeling welcomed. But honestly, as far as I was concerned, she wasn't welcomed. She E would leave as soon as she arrived. One weekend me and E held a small get together. A few guys, a couple of girls and of course me and E. We were having snacks and playing Guitar Hero. Full of mics, drums, guitars, it was a blast and we were having a great time. All of a sudden, a loud banging was on our front door and I mentally groaned. Only E's mother knocked like that. E sighed and opened the door as soon as her mother saw the group. She gave this fake gasp in horror. Oh my lord! Why are there boys over here? It's already 7pm, it's too late for them to be here, she said, extremely overreacting. Keep in mind I'm 20 at this point and E is 22. We were just having fun, mom. Besides, it's not a big deal. We have guys over all the time. These guys are our friends. E said, seeming to be just as confused as I was. She acted like our apartment was her house and her rules were no boys allowed. I expect this kind of behaviour from her, her mother said, pointing at me accusingly. I know she's nothing but a slut. And I know you're a good girl and would never let these boys over without talking to me about it first, she said. I was pissed. Thankfully, before I bitch slapped this woman, he actually yelled at her mom, which probably had a more lasting effect than me assaulting her. Mom, how dare you say such a thing about my best friend? She has been extremely patient with you about how rude and terrible you are whenever she's around. You're horrible to her and yet she still never asks you to get out of the house or stop coming over. But to call her such a terrible thing, it's my turn. Get out, 
she said firmly. Oh, you can't be serious, I'm your mother! She was whining now like she was ready to cry. I'm serious, get out! Go home, and unless you call first, don't come over here. We won't be opening the door if you do. Also, next time you call, I'm handing the phone directly to Jay, me. And if the first words out of your mouth are not a sincere apology, we won't be talking again, he said. You can't make me apologise for the truth, she said, tears starting to fall. Get out already! I swear I'll call the police, he screamed at her, and her mom stormed out sobbing as she did so. I was so proud of E. I hugged her, and after it was all calmed down, our friends included, we resumed our fun Guitar Hero games. It took almost three weeks before finally, after hundreds of calls, not being an apology to me, she finally relented as she said she was sorry for all the name calling and being so rude towards me. I'm sure she didn't mean it, but I accepted the apology anyway. She was better after and did call before coming over, but she was still rude whenever she thought she could get away with it. When it was time to renew our lease, I had to tell E I couldn't live with her anymore. Honestly, because she came with her mom, and I was kind of through with living with my parents and much less living with hers. Thankfully, she understood. I got my own place and she moved back home. We are still friends to this day and still close to one another, so thankfully, this didn't ruin our relationship. I can't believe it took her so long to stand up to her mother's awful behaviour and how well you put up for it for so long. It must be hard when you think you're moving in with one person, but it's actually two people you're living with. It's great that you didn't lose a friendship over it all, though. Alright, so have you thought about whether the person who nearly ruined a wedding by almost drowning in the lake is a drunk or a kid? It, of course, is a drunk. I went for a drunken late night boat ride hours after the wedding. To find an open bar down the lake, I fell in. The water was not very deep, but I didn't know until I was going under. I stood up, staggered to shore and passed out. Woke up in the ER and shit myself. Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed what you have heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.